My name is Alan Taylor. I'm the Career Tech Ed Director for Region 14 in the southern part of the state of Indiana. And uh, we have Prosser School of Technology, which serves 22 high schools, 11 school corporations, and about 19 CTE programs. Uh, why are CTE advisory committees important? Well, I think they're crucial to the health and well-being of any high-quality career tech ed uh, program. Uh, I think the better a and the more involved and the more um, ingrained, really, an advisory committee is in terms of being a part of the CTE program, uh, being connecting that CTE program to the community, and most importantly, uh, uh, not just advice, which is important, uh, about curriculum and kind of the, the latest, you know, just take a for instance, uh, say we were doing uh, auto collision technology. Uh, that particular profession changes annually. Uh, there, are, there are always new technologies available, there are always uh, uh, new um, uh, rules, regulations from OSHA uh, that have to be, uh, uh, you, you all have to be aware of, and certainly your advisory committee can help you with that, but I think most importantly the advisory committee will help you place your students. That senior year we feel as though it is crucial. Uh, to have a co-op or internship experience. The vast majority of those are paid, some are unpaid, uh, and we want to get students out in the workforce to understand what it's like to um, really um, uh, work in the field and uh, be a professional. So the advisory committee can really help with that. And the last thing that, that's really important about advisory committees from my perspective is that we have Perkins dollars to spend at our Career Tech Center, really on all of our Career Tech Ed programs uh, in our region. And I use the advisory committee minutes and often will attend advisory committee meetings if we're going to make a major purchase. So if I've got to get a, a, a frame straightening machine or a, or a new paint booth, using that uh, analogy of uh, auto collision repair technology, um, I want to hear from the advisory committee what kind of stuff we need to be buying, uh, how much those things cost, how we can share things, which is another important piece. Uh, if we have a local shop, do we, do we need to replicate or duplicate what that local shop already has? Or will they give us an, uh, an opportunity for our students to use some of their equipment as well? So many things are important about um, career tech ed advisory committees, but I really like the fact that they connect us to the community, they connect us to the profession, and they serve as uh, employers for our students. What advice do you have for new CTE faculty who are forming advisory committees for the very first time? Well, if, if you've, um, if you are, if you're coming in as a new CTE faculty member and you have a partner, a faculty partner, and in many TNI programs, uh, there might be two or three people, depending on how big the program is, two or three faculty. Um, take your lead from other faculty. They should have already formed a CT advisory committee. And, um, you know, <coughs> excuse me, they may have some goals for you and some things for you to do on the committee, but take your lead from others. Don't recreate the wheel. Don't, you know, do a new one. Now, if you are a single CTE faculty member, and you're taking over from someone who didn't have a very strong committee, my strong advice is scrap it. Scrap the committee completely and start from scratch. Go to the Indiana Department of Education website, look at um, the guidelines for advisory committees, uh, CT advisory committees, and follow those guidelines and talk to your career tech ed director, your local director and or principal, and most importantly talk to some other faculty members who have strong advisory committees so you can create from ground zero the very best advisory committee that you can have.